5 Kilobyte Productions presents the Funnel Tricks Reel to Reel Tape Recorder. A smaller Funnel Tricks. And um, first of all, I'll show you that it has this case for it. It's a leather case. Um, the case isn't in the best shape. This part's broken off. And it had to be duct taped here to hold this. But um, as you can see, on the inside of the case, it has some sturdy walls. The tricks machine would go there, little electron speaker there, and microphone and any other accessories would go in that part right there. And here's where you'd access one part of the machine's operations, and the other part of the operations would be accessed right here. So, it's a very nice little setup. Here's my folder on tape recorder manuals. We have the manual for the funnel tricks machine in here. Um, I'm not going to show that much of the manual because it's just kind of not the easiest thing in the world to, sh to show that much of the manual. But um, I have the manual for it. This is a very nice little setup. This Funnel Tricks. The Funnel Tricks machine is from 1955 and um, has its original mic, the original little external speaker. And the machine is in an all-metal case except that the top cover and the bottom piece are plastic. Of course the speaker and microphones cases are entirely plastic. It's in very good shape as you can see the, where it says Funnel Tricks is really nice. And you also see it's a German made machine. Now these Funnel Tricks machines require, uh, well, take up to three inch reels but they have to use a special kind of 3 inch reel. They have to use a, this, these smaller Funnel Tricks ones have to use a large hub 3 inch reel because if you use a small hub one, such as these, these 3 inch reels here with the small hubs, when you're at the beginning of the tape, that hub will be so small that the speed will be too slow on the take up drive and it won't keep up and the tape will just spill. So you have to use a larger hub to accommodate for the slower speed take-up drive, which is how it was designed. Probably because the design of this machine is incredibly simple. There's no belts at all. It's all idlers. It's a very simple mechanism. Um, but it's not easy to get inside to show the mechanism exactly. Um, but anyway, machine is working off original parts. There's only one problem I'm having with it, it, which is it tends to record and play at slightly different speeds a lot of times. So I'll record something and then when I go to play it back, it plays back a little bit slow. So I have to turn this knob very slightly to get it to play back at the right speed. Um, because right here is a speed control... blurry. Right here is a speed control knob which is just a rheostat and that's all the controls of motor speed there's no governor and there's no servo control it's just a rheostat just like you find on a lot of rim drive recorders although it has a much greater um, uh, variance of speed you can get it from super slow where it doesn't even want to turn much to faster probably more like a 3 inch four speed and um, if we take the head cover off you'll see that the head points inward that points that way most recorders the head points this way but this one's head points inward because the recording side of the tape faces outward instead of inward the erase head is a permanent magnet and of course you'll see it has a capstan and pinch roller as it is a capstan drive recorder of course the tape points outward so the tape is wound in a much more odd way and I think the reason why it was the reason why it's like that is just for the I think it made the design simpler the way the motor drives were to turn them in these directions and to have the head on that side so anyway let's first show how it recorded music
it isn't that loud. You can overdrive it easily. So. So it can get very, very slow. Here's the original mic. You can hear distortion as it tries to put the very low frequencies through, which it does not do a good job at. I'm now recording at the very slow speed on the Phonotrix reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Let's see Let's turn the volume up higher. Oh, it's up all the way about. Okay, well, let's see how it records at this very slow speed. I believe this is a, a dynamic mic because um, it has some weight to it. And I think a crystal mic would sound way too tinny on this thing. This has no fast forward. It takes some time before you can hear my recording come in. But you can hear it's incredibly slow from the other recording. It's probably slower, it's probably more like 15 16 I'm now recording at the very slow speed on the final trip's reel to reel tape recorder. Let's see. Let's turn the brain up higher. Now recording on a faster speed. Let's see how the sound quality sounds on the Phonotrix. I don't think it has a model number at all. On the faster speed on this Phonotrix German-made reel-to-reel tape recorder from about 1955. Amazing. 1955. That is unbelievable. Especially for something this small and transistorized. It precedes the Steelman transit tape. And is my oldest uh, transistorized tape recorder. Quality sounds in the phono tricks. I don't think it has a model number at all. On the fast speed like on this phono tricks German made rear rear tape recorder from about 1955. Amazing. 1955. That is unbelievable. Especially for something this small and transistorized. It precedes the Steelman transit tape. You can see on the side of the machine, you can see it uses a very strange jack. Such a classic tape recorder this is, and a fun to use little machine, the fun on tricks reel to reel. Such a classic tape recorder this is, and a fun to use little machine, the fun on tricks reel to reel. And then you notice, of course, it played back a little bit slower. So that's the only problem this machine has, is that. Maybe it's slight differences in the current it takes to play and record, taking away from the motor, because it's not governor controlled, or servo controlled and since it's not regulated there's a lot more um, likelihood of the motor speed not being consistent based on how much uh, voltage is available and things like that. 
Now, remember the recorder? I a uh, video I did in early, I mean, uh, late 2009 of my first funnel tricks reel to reel tape recorder where I described it looked like a duck. At that time, I didn't have the original microphone or original speaker to a funnel tricks. I have the machine right here. And it's not in nearly as good condition. You notice the head cover is, has that thing right there. And it also has a pink head cover, which is interesting. You'll also notice on this one, it's surprising that it manages to still work off original parts at all or make electrical contact because of the amount of rust that's inside this one. I mean, that is just amazing. Look at all that rust in there. I don't know how well you can see all that. There's even rust in the circuitry itself. And all that rust on that battery contact there. I'm amazed it manages to make contact at all. Because there's so much rust in this machine. And you can see the rust got on there. And of course, the source of that rust was none other than batteries. Probably carbon zinc batteries. You know, those kind of, like, say, heavy-duty, that don't last long at all. But even there... It still manages to work. Battery might not be making good contact at this moment, though. Because it's not starting up faster. Let's see. I guess it is making good contact. Maybe the batteries are just low. These batteries are a little bit low. The ones in the other one are fresh. But anyway, still... Oh, there we go. It's the speed control. Okay, see. So we can try this machine out as well. And you can see, even though it has rust in the circuitry, and just rust on the battery contacts, and just... A heck of a lot of rust in it. That's too bright. There's so much rust in this thing, it's too probably too dim now. But it still manages to work though. I'm now recording on the rusted Phonotrix reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, which, amazingly enough, still works with all that rust in there. Even the circuitry works. Original parts, too. just amazing that it still manages to work so I hope you enjoyed the video of these little funnel tricks reel to reel tape recorders and of course I have a, another funnel tricks the bigger type funnel tricks with built-in speaker which also works off original parts although sometimes the uh, Servo control does not want to turn on the motor sometimes. I think it's the transistor is getting weak, but it does still work most of the time. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video of this or these Funnel Tricks Reel to Reels from 1955.